Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by The Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we're headed down the Willamette Valley to explore one of Oregon's most colorful cities, none other than Eugene. That's right, Vicki, home of the University of Oregon and known for its sort of counterculture vibe, uh, think Oregon Country Fair. Eugene is a great place to hang out, whether you're like a student on campus or you're just a tourist passing through. And this summer, the city will also be hosting the World Athletics Championships, also known as Oregon 22, drawing some of the best track and field athletes on the planet, as well as a bunch of spectators who will all be descending on the town between July 15th and 24th. That is right. And I will actually also be there to photograph the event. And aside from watching the track meet, hanging around campus, I imagine visitors to Eugene will be looking for some other things to do around town. And we'll talk about some of those things in a little bit, Jamie, but I feel like we should address one of the biggest questions these visitors and I have, which is where to find the best food in town. So let's hear some restaurant recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. A very important thing when you're going to any town, especially a town that you might not be familiar with, and especially a town where there's probably a really good food scene like Eugene. But of course, because neither of us is exactly well-versed in Eugene's food scene, we'll be talking to someone who is. The restaurant reporter and critic for the Oregonian Oregon Live, our colleague, Michael Russell. Michael, thanks for joining us today. Hey guys, how's it going? Glad to be here. Happy to have you joining us, our expert on all of the great food in the state. (laughs) Um, So, Michael, I heard you recently took a trip down to Eugene, uh, and you took the train there? Well, I actually took the train back, which is a complicated story involving my best friend who is visiting from Amsterdam, which I won't bore you with. But uh, we drove down together. He took the car, and I took the train back. That was... uh, the, that's the way I think you should experience Eugene if you can and if there's room on the train. Um, but, you know, before about a month ago, I was not an expert in Eugene food. Um, I leave a lot of the sort of travel focused restaurant recommendations to folks like Jamie. Uh, but our bosses asked me to go down there. I went down four times to write a pretty comprehensive, I think, restaurant guide to not just restaurants, food carts, bars. I hit, I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 places and then narrowed down my top 20 or so with little sidebars on, you know, old school places, other carts you might check out, uh, brunch spots, like kind of everything you might need to know to refuel uh, after you, you know, break the record for the mile or whatever those uh, athletes are doing down there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, before we get into some of your specific recommendations, I guess I'm curious, what do you feel like the general vibe is of the food scene in Eugene right now? Yeah, that's really interesting. I I kept coming back in my head because I'd just been uh, in Beaverton a lot, our suburb to the west, doing a restaurant guide there. And in some ways, Eugene is like the polar opposite of Beaverton. Beaverton has all these great international restaurants, a real specialty in uh, East Asian food, especially Korean restaurants are fantastic out there. Whereas Eugene, a lot of the Chinese and Korean restaurants are okay. They're doing a great job. I'm not slagging on the mom and pop places down there. But what Eugene specializes in is something Beaverton doesn't have, which are these kind of uh, uh, farm-to-table, chef-driven, seasonal concepts that Portland's also really good at. Uh, And I would say Eugene in a lot of ways reminds me of Portland from about 10 years ago not trying to knock the food scene down there as being behind us or anything. It's just a a little smaller and uh, they're doing some things that Portland restaurants were doing 10 years ago in terms of sourcing from local farms. And uh, there's not a lot of awareness about this idea of cultural appropriation, which Portland uh, has gotten used to in the past five or six years. I called Eugene the second best food scene in Oregon in terms of its restaurants And a lot of that is just because they do have these deep ties to local farms and there are a lot of chefs doing cool things down there, um, some more successfully than others. Uh, But, you know, people question that and I'm just not sure what number two would be in Oregon if it's not Eugene. 
Um, you know, you could throw out Bend or Ashland or something. Jamie, you and I could debate that. Obviously, you know these restaurants pretty well. <laughs> but for me, I think I think it actually is Eugene. It's interesting because, like, it's Eugene is, is such a college town too. And when I think of like college town dining, I don't know. Maybe it's just this this psychological thing. I think of like dining halls. I think of like you know yeah. cafeterias. Like, I, I don't think of college town food as being anything yeah. desirable. Maybe that's just a college town that Vicky and I were both in, but um, it sounds <laughs> like that, that's not, that's not what's going on in Eugene. When I think of my college town, I think of fast food restaurants, nothing farm to table focused whatsoever, you know, but stuff that is really geared more towards students on a budget. When I hear about Eugene, I am just blown away that there's something <laughs> more than that offered there. I know we're going to talk about sort of my top five restaurant picks here, so I don't want to jump too far into that. But let's just say that there are a bunch of restaurants that cater to students that are cheap, fast, and maybe not the kind of places uh, that you would drive two hours to get to from Portland. But this is also the town where... Um, you know, they've had a farmer's market of some sort since, I think, 1917. Um, the Saturday market, which has an international food court, that's been going on since before Portland Saturday market. In fact, Portland Saturday market was inspired by it. Stephanie Pearl Kimmel, who's like the most influential restaurateur down there, she opened her Excelsior Cafe in 1971. That was the first Oregon restaurant to sort of highlight Oregon wines on the menu. 71 is the same year that Chez Panisse opened in Berkeley. And that's like one of the most famous farm to table restaurants in America. That restaurant led to a restaurant called Marche, which is this bistro that's been around itself for 24 years. And out of Marche has come lots of people who took the sort of local sourcing and put their own spin on it, including a couple of food carts that I would say are like two of the top five restaurants in Eugene. Um, you know, that's not your typical college town. Although I guess I'd point out Berkeley where Chez Panisse is, is also a college town. Um, it is uh, from Marche. Marche has spun off multiple restaurants and a food hall next door to Marche, which is sort of like a mix of a bakery and a sandwich shop and a cookbook store, a wine shop, charcuterie. There's a florist in there. And even that alone, it's like, I, I don't even know if there's something like Provisions Market Hall. That's what the food hall is called. I don't think even Portland does it, that concept, quite as well as this one in Eugene. So even though, yes, there are places that cater to the student clientele, there's just a 50-year history of farm-to-table cuisine there that's like very obvious. And it's led to a bunch of restaurants, some old, some new, uh, which take food really seriously. I think it's actually literally worth and I'm trying to convince friends to go with me, uh, making a drive after this World Athletics Championships, making a drive to Eugene just to eat. Wow. <laughs> that's bold. Well, that's me? A, that's the full me? endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> that is the full endorsement from Michael Russell right there. Let's jump into your take on the essential restaurants of Eugene. Maybe let's break down five standout spots. Right. That's, that's great. And I think that is the, that's the thing I've told friends if I took the five best restaurants in Eugene and put them against the five best restaurants in every other city in Oregon, I think Eugene beats everybody but Portland. So I did put together a list for you guys. I think one of the most interesting restaurants I went down there is a place called Akira, uh, which is named for a manga, a comic that you, you may have heard of or read. There's a movie too. But it's an omakase sushi spot on the ground floor that you have to make reservations for. It might be too late. And then upstairs, they have this sort of like manga attic bar thing where they have cocktails, where they're making their own syrups and things. And there's like movies on TV and Toshiro Mifune, the samurai movie star, has this portrait on the wall. And there's a bartender named Thor who's, you know, is like a Thor type guy. Um, so that that's one. Uh, <laughs> it, over in the Whitaker neighborhood, there's a place, another Japanese restaurant called Izakaya Meiji. Uh, which specializes in kind of Japanese fusion. They'll do skewers and uh, uh, things like that, but they'll make onigiri, which is rice triangles, and they stuff it with nduya, which is a type of, I think of it as like Italian chorizo. It's like a spiced gra ground sausage. Oh. So they're, they're doing fusion. They're also doing this, uh, I think it's called itameshi cuisine, which is like Japanese, Italian. Like what would an Italian restaurant look like in Tokyo? So here it might be, 
pesto pasta where there's some uh, shiso leaves in the pesto and they might put sea urchin on top of the noodles and it makes it a little bit Japanese and really exciting. So that's also probably the best cocktail bar in town and everyone gets these bourbon gingerade cocktails that are really good. That's two. Three would be party bar. Should I just keep rattling these off? Are you guys good with that? Sure. Okay. Three, yeah. <laughs> three is party bar, which is this like restaurant that started as a food truck, became a small restaurant and expanded to its whole space. It's been had six or seven different incarnations over the years. And uh, it feels like a really hip LA restaurant. Like uh, if you guys have ever heard of like animal in LA, like it's just like, they're just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. But the food I had there was great. They had the best burger I've had. I had in Eugene and I actually tried a lot of burgers. Uh, they also do, you know, fresh shuck Northwest oysters um, and really creative uh, 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 bar snacks as well. That's a really fun place to go um, for like creative cuisine. Uh, and then my final two are actually two food trucks. So Pizzeria DOP uh, is a food truck from a guy named Rocky Maselli. And he's actually the son-in-law of the owner of Marche, but he spent time down in San Francisco working at a great uh, Neapolitan pizza shop. They sent him to Naples to train in Naples. He got VPN certified. He comes back, he's opened this truck, and he makes some of the best Neapolitan pizza in Oregon, probably the entire Northwest. And we actually broke the news on our uh, website, OregonLive.com, that he's opening a full uh, Osteria in Eugene later this year, which should be super exciting with pasta and Negronis and things like that. And then my last choice is probably the one I'm most excited about. Uh, it's a place called Yardi. They do Caribbean food. It's from a young chef named Isaiah Martinez. He followed Rocky Maselli up from San Francisco. They worked together at the Italian place. And uh, he recently, in the past few years, rediscovered a love for his uh, the, the cuisine of his parents and their parents and their parents in the Caribbean, uh, specifically Granada and Puerto Rico. And he makes just incredible fried chicken, incredible doubles, which is this Trinidadian dish with turmeric uh, crepes filled with chickpeas and all these spices and, and you know, chili sauces. I love his food so much, and he really is probably like the chef I'm most excited to see what he does in Eugene next year and two years and three years from now whenever he gets to open his own restaurant. Oh, my God. Those are – Did I get you? <laughs> <laughs> so that's my top five. Like, I mean, obviously, there's Marche. Uh, has been around forever. They're still doing cool stuff. I'd go sit in the bar and get some steak frites and a, and a Manhattan. You know, you've got Cafe Soraya. You've got uh, Beppe and Gianni's. You've got all these old places that are still doing great stuff. A good pizza at Hey Neighbor or The Wheel. Uh, uh, not just Pizzeria DOP. Tons of great options in Eugene. Dozens of restaurants worth checking out. Uh, so that's just scratching the surface. But those were the five that I thought really took food seriously and really knocked it out of the park. What I'm really impressed with is is the um, diversity, the creativity of a lot of these places. It sounds like mm -hmm. that there's people trying different things and new things, which reminds me a lot of sort of Portland's food scene where you see stuff kind of always um, experimenting, always trying, always sort of churning. Um, I, I don't know. Is, did you get that sense of sort of creativity um, down there in Eugene's food scene? Well, when you talk to some of the chefs at these like top five places, they can be a little bit down on Eugene. I think they can, they might say some of these restaurants are kind of resting on their laurels and that they are bringing some sort of renewed energy to the city and the skills and experience from really high level restaurants outside of Eugene. And that's kind of the way food scenes grow and develop, you know, new talent comes in or chefs who grew up in a place, they move away, they come back uh, with skills honed at top restaurants in big cities. I see that happening there. I mean, you know, Yardy, which I mentioned, yes, it's a black owned food truck and there are a handful of black owned food trucks in Eugene. Can I say there's a lot of black owned businesses, food businesses in Eugene? I don't think so, but it's kind of nice that the place that is black owned is also incredible. And I would recommend Isaiah's fried chicken. I, okay. I think he makes the best skillet fried chicken in the Northwest and you know, We've had a few places that have done that in Portland over the years. Um, Muscadine, Country Cat, uh, 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 Yonder, you know, some of them have closed. All of them closed, actually, except for the Country Cat at the airport. But when I tried Isaiah's from this little food truck, I was like, oh, wait, 
yeah, this is how skillet fried chicken should taste. It's crunchy on the outside. It's tender inside. It's been brined. They've taken it super seriously. Uh, and it's served on the side with like, you know, vegetables from the farmer's market that are, you know, really fresh. And they kind of offset the fact that you're eating maybe unhealthy food, but that you're pairing it with sort of healthier stuff. Maybe it's a little cornbread. Maybe it's some stone fruit that's in season. Um, anyway, I'm going to blow them up so much and they're already busy. So like, <laughs> actually don't go to Yardy because man, like it's going to be a long line. Maybe go after the uh, World Athletics Championships. <laughs> For real. So I'm curious as far as the food cart pods go, is it as prominent as all of the pods that are in Portland or are they smaller, kind of not as grouped up as they are in Portland? Well, there's a handful of lone wolves or lone wolves, however you say that. I think um, the, uh, <laughs> the, the best ones and the ones I mentioned are at what we think of as pods in Portland, like you know, accumulations of five or six carts on one lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Yardy is outside of Cold Fire Brewing, which um, is probably one of the, you know, it's one of the best breweries in, in Eugene, I would say, hands down. Um, and there's a barbecue cart there. There's a hand-pulled noodle cart next door. There's uh, some Japanese comfort food. So, you know, lots of options all together. Uh, that's probably my favorite pod. My second favorite being the the friendly, um, I think it's called the friendly market pod, a little bit south of town. And then Pizzeria DOP, which is the Neapolitan pizza truck, which is incredible. Uh, they pop up at different breweries and wine bars around town. So they're at the farmer's market in the new just built farmer's market pavilion Tuesdays and Saturdays. I think on Thursdays, they're at Oakshire uh, Brewing, which is another very, very good Eugene brewery, um, you know, unless they're off doing private events or whatever. They're, they're at Capitella Wines one of the days. They, you know, you have to like go on social media and it's kind of annoying, but you figure out where they are. So it's a mix. It's a lot like Portland, I think, you know, or if you've ever been to Bend, the food cart scene there is kind of like a mini version of Portland. I think Eugene is pretty comparable to Bend in that sense. Um, you know, they've embraced the pod. <laughs> Just like Embrace you Embrace the pod. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, I know you mentioned um, Cold Fire Brewing. Um, I wondered if you could um, let us know if there, you know, uh, of any other good breweries in Eugene. Obviously, it's a major Oregon city. I imagine there are a number of good breweries in town. Yeah, I went along with our beer writer Andre Mounier um, and hit up seven or eight breweries. Um, you know, it's not like it's not quite as broad of a scene as like Bend, which you know, the Central Oregon has something like twenty-five plus breweries between Redmond and Bend and Sisters. Um, Eugene, it's probably more like in the low teens, but the ones that really impress me are Ale Song, which is a mixed culture, barrel aged, uh, brewery. So they do kind of like what we think of as sour ales and they have a tasting room that looks like a fancy wine bar tasting room, uh, in the fifth street public market on top of, uh, Marche and provisions market hall where you can go and drink beer out of a wine glass. And it's a you know, their product wins a lot of awards. I find it to be fantastic. Cold Fire is a brewery that I don't think their reputation has quite fully reached Portland because I think their beer is excellent. Great IPAs. And their Czech Pilsner, which I had with Yardy's Fried Chicken, was like probably my favorite single beer that I had down there. Um, you know, and that's not an easy style to do. So they, they knocked that out of the park. And then Oakshire would probably be my third pick. They've been around for a long time. I'm not like totally in love with their flagship IPA, uh, but they had some wild and sour ales on tap there that I thought were really good, including one with that was made with peach, a peach sour ale that was like, wow, I, I'm really impressed that they could do that. Well, you mentioned at the top of the show here that Eugene is a place that you can go to just to go check out the food. It's worth the food on its own is worth going to visit town. So I guess I'm wondering, Michael, you know, so you're, you're saying, Hey, I want to go back. I want to take some friends. What does that trip look like for you? What is like a quick, you know, itinerary or quick approach you might take for, um, doing exactly that. People who I'm friends with eat like a lot. Like we'll go to a place and we'll eat like eight restaurants <laughs> in a day. And it's just not what normal people do. But uh, I've been bugging a foodie friend of mine. Uh, shout out to Gary the foodie. If you happen to be listening to this podcast. Um, I've been saying, look, I'll drive you down. We'll go to uh, Yardy. We'll go to Pizzeria DOP. We'll hit up Party Bar. Um, you know, and then and then just come back, I guess. Maybe go to a, uh, have a drink or something. But 
he said, let's wait until Pizzeria DOP opens their, their full restaurant in October. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely want to go back. I'm looking out for those two carts to open their restaurants because I think those will probably be, um, you know, Yardy doesn't have a space or anything yet, but I think that's the long-term plan. Those will probably be two of the top three or four restaurants in the city. Really looking forward to that. And hopefully I'll get to take the train to Vicky's point because I only got to do that uh, on one leg of the trip and it was quite pleasant. Wow. Well, I feel like I'm fully prepped to eat out every single day that I am there. And I don't know if I can try eight different places in one day, <laughs> given, <laughs> you know, actually having to work, but I would like to do that. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk more about some of the best things to do in Eugene. All right, we are back from a break and we are talking with Michael Russell, the food reporter and critic for the Oregonian Oregon Live. And we just talked about some of Michael's favorite spots in Eugene. And now we're going to talk about some of the other things to do in Eugene. But first off, Michael, tell us a little bit more about taking the train uh, to Eugene or from Eugene back to Portland. Right. So I have this like 20 year dream that one or both of my kids will go to Eugene and I'll be able to like show up uh, to go to the University of Oregon and I'll be able to show up in Eugene wearing like head to toe ducks gear and just embarrass the hell out of them and go, go watch some football or something like that. But part of that weird dream is I've always wanted to ride the train from Portland, you know, our Union Station down there get off, maybe have a beer. There's this like dive bar right on the corner next to the train station called, uh, I think it's called Jackalope that smells a little funny in there, but uh, you know, it just feels like a fun thing to do. And uh, so I did have this opportunity when my best friend had to take my car somewhere else. And I did hop on the train. It was two hours late, as you can kind of expect from Amtrak, but you know, I just wandered around that downtown area and did a little shopping and stuff. Um, I got on the train. It happened to be the, um, Jamie, help me out. This a star, Starlight Express. Starlight Express, right. So there's there's three trains that head between Portland and Eugene every day. The sort of fancier one that I think has more federal funds is the Starlight Express. It has a beautiful observation car with these sort of bubble windows. And I got on there and I was going to do some work uh, while riding the train. And then, you know how it is. The Wi-Fi is not super great and the view is really nice. So you end up just kind of looking out the window the whole time. Uh, so I really <laughs> recommend if, you know, this is like post world athletics championships, plan a trip around taking the train. It drops you off right outside, um, this little restaurant zone with a dive bar. And there's a restaurant called black wolf supper club, which does like, you know, New Orleans Southern food. That's, that's cool and good too. Um, and then you can kind of wander out from there and visit, visit provisions, Mark hall, check into one of your hotels, whatever. Uh, that's a great way to see the city. I should say, uh, I misspoke. Coast Starlight is that train. Starlight Express is a musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber, apparently. Um, so <laughs> that was thanks, my mind, thanks yeah. to my brain for that one. Um, well, so I know, Mike, we've... <laughs> more of a cat's... I'm more of a cat's guy. <laughs> well, so we, we've talked a lot about um, a lot of food um, and beer and eating. But Eugene, of course, is a town that is famous for its many ways to burn off those calories. So um, you had mentioned a couple of um, sort of outdoor activities that you took um, while you were there. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about those things. Right. And it's funny you guys mentioned all these athletic people coming to town. And I remember reading one time that like when Steve Prefontaine used to run around Eugene before he passed away, people used to yell pre at him. And my joke has always been that when I jog around Eugene, people yell post. No? Okay. <laughs> um, <but laughs> what, so anyway, one of my totally favorite, th one of my favorite ways to burn off some calories uh, after these eight meals per day is um, actually Steve Prefontaine's trail. So they, Pre, I think, had a hand in designing this back in the 70s, 80s, whenever it was. But there's this totally stunning wood chip line trail in Alton Baker Park, which sort of like is a, a park just off the Willamette River, uh, just north of the Willamette River. It's kind of like a like think of the Columbia Slough in Portland, but, you know, more of a city park. And, you know, Hayward Stadium's t just across the river to the south. Autzen Stadium, where the Ducks football team plays, is just to the north. And this is like a maybe 
in my head, I thought it was like 15 miles and I Googled, it was probably more like six or something, but you know, running. <laughs> so you can do this loop and it's beautifully wood chip lined and they hold races there sometimes. And like, you know, cross country races, you pass little like, you know, inlets of little rivers and sloughs. And uh, at one point you can go up on a bridge and see the Willamette, not far from its, you know, headwaters, I guess, probably 50 miles uh, away or something like that. So it's kind of got a rapid vibe to it. So that's something I try to do every morning I'm there is take a little jog around that trail. Um, and then the other two things I've been doing are like right by the train station, you can walk up this uh, Skinner's Butte, which is kind of like Portland's Mount Tabor. It's a pretty short hike. Um, and there's always teenagers at the top indulging in um, cannabis related activities um, <laughs> and checking out the view. And then for like an even more natural, way more beautiful hike on the south side of town, there's a hike called Spencer's Butte, which is like an all time hike for me in Oregon. You park near the Ridge Trail, you walk about two miles through the forest, you'll see woodpeckers and chipmunks and things. And then right near the end, you pop out. Uh, on a, you know, sort of gradual staircase on this rocky exposed top to this butte. And when you get to the top, you can look down at Eugene, look north through the valley. Um, I was looking for Corvallis, but couldn't see it. Uh, you look east, you see uh, Bachelor and the Three Sisters. Uh, you look west, you see the coastal mountains. South, I was looking, can, can we see all the way down to you know, Shasta. No, no, that's way too far. But like, you know, it's just like a total 360 feels like you're looking through a bird's eye camera and you're going to do your selfies up there. And then some guy's going to like run up past you on the trail at like five minute mile pace. And you're going to feel like a schlub again. <laughs> amazing, amazing thing to do down there. Spent, I think that one's, I hope I don't have them backwards. But Spencer's view, whatever the one South of town is, that is like, total recommendation and then if you're at cold fire brewing and you feel you need to burn 200 calories jog up skinner's butte and uh you know say what's up to the teens at the top yeah you do have those correct spencer butte is the bigger one on the south side of town skinner butte is the one right on the river in town you know you, you mentioned a couple of places to hike and run obviously great things to do in eugene one of the things i love about this town is the sheer variety of outdoor recreation opportunities so aside from running and hiking trails you have a, a really spectacular uh, biking trail that runs along the Willamette River um, for many, many miles all around Eugene. You also have um, the rock climbing opportunities at a place called the Columns, which is also at Skinner Butte. Um, and obviously there's, there's, you know, you got the, the Willamette River and you have some lakes and reservoirs in the area that are really nice for kayaking um, or canoeing or stand up paddle boarding. So it really is a town where whatever kind of outdoor activity you're looking for, there is some way to get out and do it right in Eugene, which is, I think, really cool and really unique. Yeah, I love that you can, you know, go hiking, go biking, climb. The variety sounds pretty endless. I'm curious, uh, what other spots, maybe if someone's not interested in being all outdoorsy while in Eugene, what other spots are pretty noteworthy? Well, I mean, you know, I did mention this, this is a foodie thing too, but they just did build this new food, uh, 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 farmer's market pavilion downtown. They're kind of hoping to create this new town square downtown. So they built a year round farmer's market pavilion is, is pretty nice. It operates Tuesday and Saturday. Um, the the columns that Jamie mentioned at Skinner's Butte, which I walked around a few times. If you go down on the west side of Skinner's Butte, there's a little like bouldering gym down there. That's another physical outdoorsy thing. Mm. Uh, but that uh, you know you could look into. I I looked into trying that, that out, and, and I just didn't have time while I was down there because uh, I was just stuffing my face the whole time. But uh, <laughs> Vicky, Vicky, what else? What else would you be interested in doing down there? I don't know. Maybe if there's anything like arts related, that type of thing, you know, someone's like, heck no, I'm not climbing any walls or going for a hike. Uh, where can they still kind of, you know, walk around, maybe see some, see some cultural there stuff. There is a great art museum um, on the campus of University of Oregon, um, which I believe is um, the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art. Um, that's a really cool spot to go if you're looking specifically, if that's, if, if you're looking for something artsy, I think that is the place to go. Um, you know, as far as other attractions in Eugene, there's the Owen Rose Garden. If you're just looking for something pretty to walk around, you don't want to do a whole big hike. The Mount Pisgah Arboretum, 
um, which is another place with some walking trails and some hiking trails. The Cascade Raptor Center, if you want to see some cool predatory birds, um, is a nice spot. And then also, let's not forget all of the Simpsons murals that are painted around the neighboring town of Springfield. Um, name, it's the namesake of Springfield, the town in the Simpsons. Um, and as a result, there are just a bunch of Simpsons murals around town. So if you're a fan of the Simpsons, head over to Springfield and uh, check those out as well. There's also a pretty decent little indie movie theater called the Broadway Metro, uh, where I saw mm. a late showing of Top Gun Metro when I was down there. <laughs> And drank a slushy Paloma. <laughs> Highly recommended. It's right by Party Bar. If you go for slushy dinner. Paloma and a late night movie, that actually sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on and giving us so many um, ideas of places to eat and drink um, and exercise and um, have a lot of fun. The Oregonian is sending a bunch of reporters down to Eugene, uh, Vicky and myself included. So we now have no shortage of ideas to check out when we're there. Yeah, I cannot wait after I am done taking some photos to just stuff my face <laughs> at all of these places. I'm a sucker for you, Gene. I got to be honest. They sent me for work and I wasn't sure, but I ended up really falling in love with the city and the food scene. And, it, you know, it's it's got a lot of room to grow, but um, there's so much fun things to eat. And if you're down there for this, you know, World Athletics Championship or any of the big races which seem to happen there every single weekend, uh, you're going to have a ton of fun. Hayward Stadium is beautiful. It looks like a baby version of the uh, the Bird's Nest Stadium in Beijing, the Olympic Stadium. It's crazy that it's in this tiny town of 176,000 people. Like, um, so much nature, so much outdoors, so many ways to get fit and run and hike, whatever you want to do, or bike, uh, as Jamie said, and also some really good restaurants. So if you do go down, I really think um, you're going to love it like I did. Michael, thank you so much for coming on today to tell us all about it. really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, it sounds like we definitely have a lot of options when we're not working, when we're in <laughs> Eugene. And wow, the range of restaurants is incredible. You have some higher end places, you got some food carts, and a few ways to just burn off all those calories. It's oh great. my gosh, that's perfect. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to spending a couple of days in Eugene, even though it's going to be for work. I'm um, not going to be able to tour and um, experience the city um, as much as I would like, like on vacation. There, I think that there's so much there that I, I, I think it's going to be impossible that I'm going to leave feeling disappointed or like I didn't do anything or see anything. Exactly. I've only been to Eugene once. And honestly, I left and I was like, you know, I feel like there's a lot here. And if I was here longer, I would have delved in a little bit more. And now that I have recommendations from our food critic, I'm totally <laughs> going into it much more well prepared. That's that's the attitude. That's perfect. Well, I think that will do it for us for today. So folks, uh, until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as hereisoregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find the details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and are interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at oregonian.com. This episode of the show is produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale and Andrew Thien. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.